You're all pretty much f Michael Douglas is a famous actor, producer, and representative of the famous acting dynasty. He's made a successful career akin to his father's Kirk Douglas and became a true Hollywood legend. We will tell you about his past to the top in this video. How Michael Douglas Lives and How Much He Earns Michael Kirk Douglas was born on September 25, 1944 in the young acting family of Kirk Douglas and Diana Dill. The boy was born in New Brunswick. New Jersey, but soon the family moved to New York. Two and a half years later, Michael had a younger brother, Joel. The family lived in a one-room apartment in the Greenwich Village area. Right now, our hero is called the heir to the show business's royal dynasty, but back then, his parents were just starting their careers. Kirk spent most of his time in California, filming under a studio contract, and his marriage with Diana couldn't withstand it. Michael's parents divorced when he was six years old, and he stayed with his mother. Seven years later, she remarried. Stepfather became the first adult Michael could talk to about anything, and thanks to whom the young man felt confident for the first time. But at school, none of the teachers could restrain his violent temperament. Even though Michael studied well, he skipped classes and talked back to the teachers. For some time, the young man worked at a mobile gas station. Some days, he was an employee of the month, and other days, he would track cars and steal spare parts from them with his friends. In addition to his stepfather, the authority for Douglas Jr. was his father, who managed to become a movie icon for the whole of America. Michael was so impressed by Kirk's films and the time spent with him on the set during the summer holidays that he also wanted to become an actor. He often asked his father which doors to knock on to break into Hollywood, but he was categorically against his son's choice of profession. However, when Michael enrolled at the University of California as a dramatic arts major and played in theatrical productions, Kirk came to his son's every performance, no matter how busy he was. At university, Douglas became friends with Danny DeVito, who later became his flatmate. They rented an apartment in New York for $150 a month. At the same time, the young man earned a living by delivering coffee at the cinema and working behind the scenes. Nevertheless, Kirk contributed to the beginning of his son's acting career. Together, they starred in and produced the 1966 film Cast a Giant Shadow. The following roles came only several years later. In the late 60s, early 70s, Douglas starred in several TV series and films such as Hail Hero and Summer Tree. On the set, the young man met a young promising actress, Brenda Vaccaro. The couple was inseparable for six years, living like hippies and vowing eternal love to each other. Michael calls this time the most wonderful in his life. But the relationship ended abruptly. Brenda just got in the car and left. The young actor's first significant work was the role of an inspector in the TV series The Streets of San Francisco, which he received in 1972 and played for five years. I've got two eyewitnesses. What do they see? Police brutality. Oh, come on now. Joe Landers? Look, he may be a little hard-nosed, but he never manhandled anybody. I don't buy that. All right, did they see the gun go off? Not who was holding it, no. His partner on the set was Kirk Douglas, friend Carl Malden. He called Michael the son he never had and insisted on his participation in the project. Interestingly, even after moving to Hollywood, Michael continued to pay his part of the rent while DeVito remained in New York. Also in 1972, our hero appeared in the films When Michael Calls and Napoleon and Samantha. The latter has become a classic of American children's films. Later, Douglas was caught up with the work behind the scenes. He directed one of the episodes of Streets of San Francisco and began working on the film adaptation of Ken Kesey's novel One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The rights to the film adaptation belonged to Kirk, but he abandoned the hope of implementing the project, so he handed them over to his son. The film surpassed all expectations, winning five Oscars and bringing fabulous profits to the Douglas dynasty. Since then, our hero has acted as a producer in many films in which he starred. In 1977, Michael married the daughter of an Australian diplomat, Deandra Luker, and a year later, they had a son, Cameron. According to both spouses, their life together was like a volcano. It subsided for a while, then erupted with terrible force. And there were a lot of infidelities. 
Deandra said in an interview that she once caught her husband with her friend, but each time she forgave him. In 1978, the thriller The China Syndrome was released. Douglas's payout in which amounted to $262,000. For his next film, the sports drama Running, Michael trained a lot and ran about 55 miles a week. In addition, he stopped smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and lost almost 13 pounds. Then the movie It's My Turn came out, but a successful career had to be put on pause for several years. In 1980, Douglas was seriously injured at a ski resort and returned to the screens only in 1983 with the crime thriller The Star Chamber. It then became widely known, unlike his next work, the adventure film Romancing the Stone. Michael, who also became the producer, bought the script for $250,000, and as a result, the box office around the world exceeded $85 million. Equally successful was the sequel titled The Jewel of the Nile in 1985, although Douglas took part in the sequel without much desire. Soon, the musical A Chorus Line was released on the screens, and in 1987, the world saw two hits at once, Fatal Attraction and Wall Street. For the former, Douglas received $13 million, and for the later, two major film awards, a Golden Globe and an Oscar. In addition, the role of the stock market shark and concurrently the main villain ironically inspired many people to make a career in economics and the stock market. In 1989, Michael presented to the audience the crime thriller Black Rain and the comedy The War of the Roses. In the latter, he worked with his friend Danny DeVito. Then he produced several films including the action movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Double Impact, and starred in the military drama Shining Through. But the absolute hit of 1992 was the thriller Basic Instinct, for which Douglas received 15 million. My sex life's actually pretty shitty since I stopped seeing you. Started developing calluses. According to Michael, shooting the sex scene with Sharon Stone was torture because they had to repeat the choreography for 10 hours of the shooting day for five days in a row. In addition, the actor forbade shooting himself naked from the front. By the way, he performed almost all the car stunts on his own. The role of the detective from Basic Instinct became one of the brightest in Douglas' career. But he didn't get stuck in one role. In the next movie, Falling Down, he appeared in the image of an average guy who cannot stand the injustice of the world. To participate in the project, Michael canceled a family vacation and later called this role his favorite. Then, the actor added several roles to his filmography in the film's Disclosure with a payout of $12 million and American President. While working on the latter, Douglas discovered a distant relationship to U.S. President Richard Nixon and both Bush, and the payout amounted to $15 million. His intuition for hits didn't let the actor and producer down. Each of his next projects was a great success. For example, the adventure film The Ghost and the Darkness and the thrillers A Perfect Murder and The Game, for each of which Michael received $20 million. Oh, no, you've got to be kidding. What is happening? This is what I was trying to explain to you. This is a, uh, a game. Meanwhile, big changes were taking place in his personal life. Since the mid-90s, their marriage with Deandra was a conformity and they just couldn't agree on the terms of the divorce. Even the marriage contract didn't make the task easier because Deandra wanted to increase the amount of compensation and Michael wanted to reduce it. At the same time, he was invested in a new relationship. In 1998, at the screening of The Mask of Zorro, he saw Catherine Zeta-Jones and was so fascinated by her that he immediately declared his desire to become the father of her children. Later, the actress would admit that she immediately fell in love with him but didn't want to have an affair with the taken man. However, six months after they met, they would spend hours on the phone talking about everything in the world. After that, the relationship developed rapidly. On New Year's Eve of 1999, Catherine was already pregnant and Michael offered his beloved a long-prepared ring with a 10-carat diamond surrounded by 28 smaller stones. Its cost is estimated from one to two million dollars. The actor's first wife then, without sarcasm, told reporters that he would have to change his religion to one where polygamy is allowed. But Douglas was already ready to agree to all DeAndre's conditions. So in 2000, he paid her $45 million and left her a mansion in Beverly Hills, as well as half of the estate in Majorca. 
By the way, Michael tried several times to find a buyer for his luxury property, but since the ex-wife remained the co-owner, he took it off the market. In August of the same year, Catherine gave birth to their first child, Dylan Michael, and in November, they had a gorgeous wedding of the year, which cost the actor $2 million. However, $1 million was covered because the magazine OK paid for an exclusive photos from the magnificent celebration. Interestingly, Michael and Catherine were born on the same day with a difference of 25 years. Personal affairs didn't prevent Douglas from actively acting and producing. So, in the same year 2000, he presented the movie Wonder Boys and together with his young wife appeared in the thriller Traffic. These two projects brought our hero 15 million. This was followed by the films One Night at Nicole's, Don't Say a Word, The In-Laws, and It Runs in the Family. The latter involved representatives of three generations of the Douglas family, Kirk and Diana, their son Michael and grandson Cameron. In 2003, the family of Michael and Catherine welcomed their daughter, Caracetta. After her birth, the celebrities moved to Bermuda, where our hero's mother is from. For more than 10 years, the couple lived in a quiet life, leaving only for filming, and the children didn't even know what their parents were doing. Their daughter recalled that as a child, she was sure that the main occupation of her dad's life was to bake pancakes for breakfast and please mom. The couple still owns this cozy nest, although they tried to sell it in 2019 for $10.6 million, but changed their minds. After a short break in his creative activity, Douglas returned to the screens in 2006 with the films The Sentinel, You, Me and Dupree, and a year later presented the comedy drama King of California. Then came the movies Ghosts of Girlfriends Past, Beyond a Reasonable Doubt, Solitary Man, and the continuation of the 1987 drama Wall Street's Money Never Sleeps. You're the ninja generation. No income, no job, no assets. You got a lot to look forward to. <laughs> a busy period in his career again coincided with the vessitudes of private life. His eldest son Cameron was a drug addict and our hero had to forbid him to approach his family. In 2009, Cameron was accused of smuggling which led him behind bars. By the way, Michael himself also suffered from addiction and in the 90s received treatment in a rehab clinic. His son also managed to get over a dangerous addiction, and Catherine Zeta-Jones at that difficult time became a real support for the family. But soon, another misfortune struck them. In 2010, Michael was diagnosed with laryngeal cancer. Catherine did everything to help her husband heal, but soon she couldn't stand the stress, and she started showing signs of bipolar disorder. Her periods of incredible activity were replaced by the deepest depression, and Michael didn't take his wife's problems seriously at all. These events almost put an end to their union and they seriously talked about divorce, but still managed to make up. In 2012 to 2014, such films as Haywire and So It Goes, Beyond the Reach and the biographical drama Behind the Candelabra were released. In the latter, the actor played the legend of American show business pianist and entertainer Liberace. And this role became a real gift for him after his illness. He trained for a long time, recreating the voice of his character and studied his piano playing technique. Also during this period, the actor starred in the comedy drama Last Vegas, along with Robert De Niro and Morgan Freeman. It's just winding up a little too fast, and I'm feeling old and alone. In 2015, Michael joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe playing the role of Hank Pym in the movie Ant-Man. He appeared in the same image in other projects, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Endgame, and the animated series What If. In addition, during the period, the actor starred in the action movie Unlocked, the thriller Animal World, took part in the voiceover of the children's series Green Eggs and Ham, and presented the series The Kominsky Method. For this comedic role, which is rare for him, Douglas received another Golden Globe. Why? It is fine. Which is what I said. No, no, you said it with an attitude, and you said, fine. Forgive me. Fine. Jesus, let's just order. Fine. In addition, our hero worked as a producer on the prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the series rashed about a psychiatric hospital nurse. At the end of 2018, Michael Douglas's star was unveiled on the Hollywood Walk, dedicated to the 50th anniversary of his career. The actor admits that only work helps him keep in shape and to be fit, and he has a lot of projects. In February 2023, the premiere of the fantastic action movie Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, took place. 
where Douglas again played Hank Pym. The filming of the series Franklin About American President Benjamin Franklin has already begun, and work is underway on a historical series about the relationship between two other presidents, Reagan and Gorbachev. Neither age nor illness affected Douglas's intelligence, and he was still surprising others with his ability to instantly remember the names of people he sees for the first time, and to notice the slightest nuances that distinguish the manner of the interlocutor's behavior. He loves golf and Formula One, and also does a lot of charity work. As the UN peace envoy, he is on a mission to draw the world's attention to nuclear disarmament and the protection of human rights. Philanthropy Douglas's family affair through the registered fund, they send money to various organizations. The entire inheritance from Kirk Douglas of $61 million was also sent to a charity, especially since Michael's fortune greatly exceeds his father's capital. It is estimated at $350 million earned as an actor and producer. In addition, Douglas invests. However, after the 2008 crisis, when he lost about 35 to 40 percent of his fortune, Michael became more conservative in investments. Douglas owns a valuable real estate portfolio with assets all over the world, which he gradually sells for his own benefit. He owned a plot of land with an area of more than 12 acres in Westchester County, New York, which he bought in 2015 for $11.3 million and sold in 2019 for $20.5 million. Around the same time, he and Catherine paid only $4.5 million for a house in the wealthy suburb of Irvington in New York State. The three-story Georgian mansion has eight bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, several living rooms and dining rooms, an indoor swimming pool, and a picturesque view of the Hudson River. Douglas and his wife also own a large apartment in New York City overlooking Central Park. The 15-room penthouse includes a master bedroom and a cozy library. In 2021, the property was put up for sale, but apparently hasn't found its buyer yet. The actor can rarely be seen in commercial advertising. The exception is the German electronic stock trading company Comdirect. But the most interesting one is the 60-second video for the FBI, in which Michael appeared as his character from Wall Street. It is known that Douglas owns cars of different brands and times, from vintage to modern, in particular the Mercedes-Benz Army Type car and the Toyota Prius. Now, the Douglas acting dynasty is continued by Michael's eldest son, Cameron. But so far, his films haven't enjoyed great success. And which movie with this actor do you like the most? Okay. 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 Richard Gere, how the ladies' man lives and where he spends his millions. Richard Tiffany Gere was born on August 31st, 1949 in a large American family of housewife Doris Ann and insurance agent Homer George Gere. Besides Richard, who was born the second, the Gears raised five children. The parents were educated but simple people and managed to give their children a happy childhood in the suburbs of New York. They tried to provide a balanced upbringing. There was room to communicate with nature because the family lived in a small rural town for creativity and sports. The future actor studied guitar with might and main, shown in the school drama club, and did gymnastics. After receiving a sports scholarship after graduation, he went to the University of Massachusetts to study philosophy and directing. At the same time, Gear dreamed of becoming a professional musician and saw himself as a world-famous trumpeter. These crazy dreams eventually prevented him from getting a degree. At first, he chased an opportunity to become a musician and then became interested in theater and dropped out of school. Finally settling in New York, Richard tried his hand at theatrical auditions and one day he was lucky. In 1975, after a series of minor characters, he got the main role in the play The Killer's Head. On stage, he was blindfolded all the time, playing a murderer sentenced to death which played into the hands of the young actor. At the time, he was extremely reserved and often got nervous, which hindered his skill. In this case, however, the audience heard only his voice, which literally mesmerized the crowd. The young actor was so talented that he was noticed by film producers. First, Gear appeared in such films as Report to the Commissioner, Looking for Mr. Goodbar, Days of Heaven, Blood Brothers, and Yanks. And then he got really lucky. The Hollywood handsome John Travolta refused the main role in the movie American Gigolo, and the job went to Gear with a fee of $35,000. Thanks to the role, he instantly gained a whole army of female fans. Not the least role in this was played by the fact that the actor had to act in some scenes completely naked. The image of the heartbreaker and the role of the lover boy was stuck to him, which over time began to weigh on him. 
Two years later, Richard was offered the lead role, and again, ironically, the one that Travolta refused. The film An Officer and a Gentleman was a great success and won two Emmy Academy Awards and was also recognized as one of the greatest romantic movies in history according to the American Film Institute. Should have warned you scuzzy female types all about the Puget dudes. Those are the ones that say they're wearing a rubber, but there's really a little hole bitten in the bottom of it. <laughs> then, Richard's filmography was replenished with the movies The Honorary Consul and Breathless. And in 1984, he starred in the gangster movie The Cotton Club, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, in which the actor performed several parts on the trumpet, reliving his youth. What is this, a kidnapping? <laughs> Would you like that? Because I think I'm up to it. <laughs> you do move me. I don't know why, but you do move me in unusual places. Surprisingly, with a brilliant cast, a venerable director, and a whole galaxy of prestigious awards, the film failed at the box office. This did not prevent Richard from getting two million for the role. Next came the historical film King David, the drama Power, the action movie Miles From Home, the thrillers No Mercy with a fee of 1.5 million, and Internal Affairs. The real fame came to gear when he approached the 40-year milestone. Richard didn't want to play at all in Pretty Woman, which was originally conceived as a drama. He didn't like the script, which was changed beyond recognition. He was tired of the roles that parasitized his heartthrob image, but his agent persuaded him to go to a meeting with the actress chosen for the main role, and Julia Roberts convinced him to agree. Experts still have trouble explaining the magic ingredient that made this trivial story a huge hit. Did you really say $100 an hour? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you don't have any prior engagements, I'd be very pleased if you would accompany me into the hotel. With $14 million invested in production, worldwide box office was $463 million. Perhaps the reason is the chemistry that arose on the set between the performers of the main roles, because for the sake of a happy ending, the screenwriters had to rewrite the finale of the picture. Initially, Edward did not even consider climbing the stairs to Vivian like a prince from her sweet dreams. In the original story, the rich man pushed the girl out of the car, throwing money at her. That's how the movie was supposed to end. Gear himself dislikes Pretty Woman for many reasons and emphasizes this in interviews, so he was very pleased with the offer of the master of Japanese cinematography, Akiro Kurosawa, who gave him a small role in his anti-war film Rhapsody in August. On the set, Richard had to speak Japanese, which he did not know. He had to memorize the lines by heart. The director was very worried that he would not be able to pay the Hollywood star for the work, but Gear assured him that he would play for free. As a result, the director paid him a symbolic amount and also paid for flight tickets for Gear and even offered to buy tickets for his friends if they wanted to visit Japan. Such a friend was Cindy Crawford, who had been his wife for a year. One of the most beautiful couples of that time was formed back in 1988, and in 1991, the official wedding took place in Las Vegas. The ceremony was very modest. It was attended by only four witnesses, and the rings exchanged by the newlyweds were made out of chewing candy wrappers. Many consider the wedding in Las Vegas a bad sign, and perhaps there is some truth in that since the couple divorced in 1995. Gear and Crawford chose not to make a tragedy or a performance out of this event. It went quickly and quietly, after which everyone went their own way. Gear's path at that time led him to Tibet. He met the Dalai Lama and almost became a monk, but the actor had so much life energy that he didn't fit into the novice's secluded routine. Since then, he sympathized with Tibet with all his heart. Richard spoke passionately about the plight of the region wherever he could. At one of his political gatherings, he went completely wild, promising to fight the Chinese alone if Tibet wouldn't get protection. The speech caused a murmur in the room, and only one woman found the courage to turn the situation into a joke. She turned out to be American actress Carrie Lowell, the famous Bond girl from the movie License to Kill. Very soon, Lowell became Mr. Gear's second wife. In 2000, the couple had a son, whom they named Homer after his grandfather's. Meanwhile, Richard Gere's film career was on the rise. He managed to appear in such films as Final Analysis, in which he also acted as a producer and the band played on, Mr. Jones, First Night, Red Corner, and Primal Fear. For shooting in the detective movie Summersby and the drama Intersection, the actor received five and seven million, respectively. And in the action movie The Jackal, he co-starred with Bruce Willis. However, the guys didn't get along very well and they swore never to act together again. Give over, Preston. Who are you really looking for? A pro. 
calls himself the Jackal. By the way, Gear could have played the main role in the movie, Die Hard, which he refused for some reason. Meanwhile, the creators of Pretty Woman decided to make money by resurrecting the duet of Richard Gere and Julia Roberts in the romantic movie Runaway Bride. The film was a success. It earned $300 million at the box office and brought Gere a fee of $13 million. Immediately after this movie, the actor flashed his dramatic talent in the role of a rich man who finds himself powerless in the face of his lover's illness and death. We are talking about the film Autumn in New York, where he co-starred with Winona Ryder. You've got the hiccups. Are you kidding? I would go with you in a heartbeat. <laughs> You're fabulous. Yeah? But, uh oh. Uh oh dear. Uh -oh. It must be me. Then the depressive mystical thriller The Mothman Prophecies and the drama Unfaithful were released, which together brought 30 million to the actor's bank account. Another work of gear in the early thousands was the melodrama Dr. T and the Woman About a Gynecologist. To better prepare for the role, Richard took the opportunity when his wife gave birth to their son, he studied the work of the maternity ward. In 2002, the name of Richard Gere again rumbled around the world, and the occasion was the release of the musical film Chicago. And I could be an awfully good sport. Good, you got that out of your system. Now listen, you mean just one thing to me. You call me when you got $5,000. The luxurious crime musical masterpiece astounded not only the audience, but also the critics, who nominated it for 13 Oscars. BAFTA, Golden Globe, and Grammy Awards could not ignore the movie either. They literally showered the creators and actors of the film with awards. Gear won the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical. And by the way, the role of the creative lawyer could have gone to actor Hugh Jackman, who refused it, which he later regretted very much. Interestingly enough, the first film adaptation of Chicago was supposed to be made back in the 70s with Frank Sinatra, Lisa Minnelli, and Goldie Hawn in the lead roles. In 2004, a remake of the Japanese romantic comedy Shall We Dance was released, where the actor rocked the dance floor with Jennifer Lopez and Susan Sarandon, with whom he was in a romantic relationship in the early 80s. Beverly, dance with me. I don't know how. Yeah, you do. No, yeah, you've been dancing with me for 19 years. The actor devoted the following years to the films that did not receive much praise. B Season, The Hoax, The Flock, I'm Not There, The Hunting Party, and Nights in Rodanthe. The next takeoff happened only in 2009 when the actor starred in the incredibly touching, kind, and sad film Hachi, A Dog's Tale. All right, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come on. <laughs> okay, it's all right. Let's see you try to talk, all right? Stay, go home, go on. While sentimental viewers around the world were crying their eyes out, its worldwide box office totaled more than 50 million. After the biographical movie Amelia, the crime thrillers Brooklyn's Finest and The Double, as well as a documentary about one of the teachers of Buddhism, Brilliant Moon, the film Arbitrage was released, in which Gear again co-starred with Susan Sarandon. Her teacher was Mr. James. Mr. James said, world events all revolve around five things. M O N E Y. He was his freshman econ. <laughs> was a fifth grade econ. Richard Gere was nominated for a Golden Globe for his performance. In 2013, the marriage of Gere and Carrie Lowell broke up when the woman found out about her husband's affair with a TV presenter of Indian origin. The separation this time was a difficult ordeal for Richard. His wife attacked him with accusations and draconian financial claims. But soon, the man met a new love. By that time, the actor had two unsuccessful marriages and a whole series of relationships of varying degree of seriousness. Uma Thurman, Kim Bassinger, Priscilla Presley, Barbara Streisand, Diana Ross, and a dozen other Hollywood beauties dated him in different years. But it seems that now Gear has stopped in his search. At one of the film festivals, he met Alejandra Siva, a journalist and the daughter of a former manager of the Real Madrid Football Club. The 34-year age difference did not bother the mature Silver Fox at all. That's how he was nicknamed in Hollywood for his refusal to dye his gorgeous gray hair. And after three years of relationships, he led his beloved one down the aisle. A modest celebration took place in April 2018 in New York and gathered only a circle of the couple's closest friends. A year later, they had a son together, Alexander, and in 2020, another heir was born, whose name was not disclosed. 
Now, the actor can afford to stop thinking about money and choose roles exclusively to his liking. Recently, his filmography more and more often includes roles in the outsure and low-budget movies. Among them are the film anthology Movie 43, the drama's Time Out of Mind, the Benefactor, Norman, The Moderate Rise, and Tragic Fall of a New York Fixer, and Three Christs. The melodrama The Second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, the thriller The Dinner, and the miniseries Mother, Father, Son. In January 2023, a comedy starring the actor, Maybe I Do, was released. Richard Gere's fortune is estimated at $120 million, which makes him one of the richest actors in the industry. He had advertising contracts with the Italian car brand Lancia, the Visa payment system, the brand of carbonated drinks Orangina, and others. He invested money in a small luxury hotel Bedford Post Inn, which is located in the suburbs of New York. Guests can meditate, do yoga, and enjoy delicious dishes made from organic produce from the hotel's own farm. Gear himself and his family live in a spacious mansion located just an hour's drive from Manhattan, which he spent $10 million to renovate in 2020. The total area of the residential parts is more than 8,600 square feet, which consists of seven comfortable bedrooms, living rooms, and a wine cellar. The couple also chose to buy a vacant plot with a swimming pool in the yard next door to expand their land to 34 acres. Experts estimate this transaction at 700000 Until 2020, Richard owned another residence in Pound Ridge for almost 35 years. He bought it for $1.5 million and managed to sell it for $24 million. Charming, spacious, colonial-style villa with an area of more than 10,000 square feet is complemented by a swimming pool and access to a pond. This deal was not the only one that Gear managed to profit from. He bought a luxury home in Southampton for only $6.5 million in 2006 and sold it for $36 million. Richard Gear also has urban real estate. Since 2016, he has owned an apartment in New York in the Gramercy Park area, worth a little more than $2 million. The property consists of two bedrooms and a living room, which the actor renovated and furnished according to his taste. It is reported that his friend, actor, and TV presenter Jimmy Fallon persuaded him to make this purchase. Until 2011, Gear had another apartment, which he owned for more than 20 years and sold for $2.6 million. Now, these spacious and bright apartments can be rented by anyone for $20,000 a month. Richard Gear is a committed Buddhist and a life lover. He desperately fights against injustice and stands for the restoration of peace. In addition to fighting for the freedom of Tibet, because of which he was banned from entering China for life, he is engaged in environmental health and human rights issues, supporting many humanitarian international campaigns. He is also outraged by current events, even auctioned off one of his cars to donate the proceeds to charity funds to help victims of the war in Ukraine. A 1999 Jaguar XK8 collector's convertible was sold for 31000 This gorgeous car has a 5-speed automatic transmission and an engine capacity of 4 liters. At the time of sale, the mileage was 31000 In everyday life, the actor was seen driving an Audi RS6. By his age, Richard Gere has received everything one could dream of. Three sons, a beloved and loving wife, fame, and wealth. It seems that the saying, a good deed is never lost, finds direct confirmation in his life path. His motto is, stop treating yourself like an afterthought. Eat delicious food, walk in the sunshine, jump in the ocean, say the truth like you're carrying in your heart like hidden treasure. Be silly, be kind, be weird, there's no time for anything else. Do you agree with Silver Fox's statement? If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.